crowd would very gently unyoke the oxen, and escort them. Ceremoniously wherever they wanted to go. And if all this had happened in a part of the city where the cart might hold up traffic, the crowd would haul it to the market themselves and leave it there to escape. This invention of mine soon led to the appearance of quite new customs in the city of Dog. For instance, that of placing crops in the public squares and at all the street crossings, where every morning the residents could leave their choicest morsels of food for dogs and other stray beings, and also the custom of going at sunrise to the sea of beneficence to throw in all kinds of food for the beings called fish. But the most peculiar of all is the custom of paying attention to the voices of one-grained and two-grained beings of various forms. As soon as your favorite heard the voice of a being of any other form, they would begin praising the name of their god and invoking his blessing. It might be the crowing of a cock, the barking of a dog, the mewing of a cat, the squealing of an ape, no matter what, it would always arouse them. It is interesting to remark here that on these occasions, for some reason or other they would raise their heads and look upward even though, according to the teaching of their religion, their God and his assistants were supposed to exist on the same level as themselves, and not where they directed their eyes and prayers. It was extremely interesting to watch their faces at these moments. Pardon me, your right reverence, interrupted the Elzebub's devoted old servant Ahun, who had been listening to these tales with the greatest interest. Do you remember, your right reverence, how often in that city of God we ourselves had to flop down in the street at the cries of beings of different forms? Indeed I do remember, dear Ahun, replied the Elzebub. How could I ever forget such comical impressions? The fact is, he continued, turning to Hassan again, the three brain beings of the planet Earth are inconceivably proud and touchy. If someone does not share their views or agree the rules they do or criticize as their manifestation, they are very offended and their indignation knows no bounds. And if one of them should happen to have some power, he would order anyone rash enough to criticize his conduct or to behave differently from himself to be shut up in the sort of place usually falling with rest and life. And if the offended one should be physically stronger, and no one were looking, at least no important power possessing being with whom he happened to be on bad terms, he would simply give the offender a good thrashing, as the Russian sitter once thrashed his favorite goat. Well known this aspect of their strange psyche, I had no desire to offend them and incur their wrath. Furthermore, as I was profoundly aware that to outrage anybody's religious feeling is contrary to all morality, I tried when existing among them always to do as they did, so as not to be conspicuous and draw attention to myself. Here it will do no harm to point out that, owing to the abnormal conditions of ordinary existence there, the only beings of that strange planet, especially during recent centuries, who become notable and are therefore honored by the rest, are those who manifest themselves somehow or other more absurdly than the majority. And the more 
deter their manifestation, the more stupid, mean, and insolent the tricks they play, the more celebrated they become, and the greater is the number of beings on their own continent, or even on other continents, who know them personally, or at least by name. On the other hand, an honest being who does not behave absurdly has no chance at all of becoming famous, or even of being noticed, however kind and sensible he may be. So, my boy, when our whom mischievously reminded me of our ludicrous situation, I was speaking of the custom of attaching significance to the voices of beings of various forms and particularly to the voice of donkeys, of which for some reason or other there were a great many in the city of God. On that planet the beings of other forms make their voices heard, each at a definite time for instance, the cock crows just before dawn, an ape cries in the morning when it is hungry, and so on, the donkeys bray whenever it enters their heads to do so and, in consequence, you may hear the voice of that silly being at any hour of the day or night. Well then, it became customary in the city of God that whenever the sound of a donkey bray was heard, Everyone immediately had to flop down and offer up prayers to their god and their revered idols I must add that nature has given the donkey a very loud voice, and its brain can be heard a long way off. So, as we walked along the streets of the city and saw the citizens flopping down at the brain of every donkey, we had to flop down likewise so as not to appear different from the others, and it was this ridiculous custom, I see now, that tickled old of him so much. Did you notice, dear Hassane, with what venomous satisfaction our old friend reminded me, after so many centuries, of my comical situation at that time? Having said this, Beelzebub, with a smile, went on with his tail. Needless to say, in this second center of culture on the continent of Ashart, the destruction of beings of other forms for sacrificial offerings entirely ceased and if isolated instances did occur, the other beings of that group settled accounts with the offenders without compunction. Having thus become convinced that I had succeeded so easily in uprooting, for a long time to come, the custom of sacrificial offerings among the second group of beings on the continent of Ashkar, I decided to leave. But I had it in mind, in any event, to visit other large centers inhabited by the beings of Moralfri Sea, and I chose for this purpose the region of the river called Nariatai. Soon after making this decision, I sailed with a moon to the mouth of that river and began to travel up it against the current. At each of the large centers we came to I was able to verify that there had already passed from the beings of the city of Gog to the beings of these places the same new customs and notions concerning the destruction of the existence of beings of other forms for sacrificial offerings. We finally arrived at a small town called Argonia, which in those days was considered the most remote point of the country of Moralfusi. It was inhabited by a fair number of beings of this second Asiatic group, who were engaged chiefly in extracting from nature what is called turquoise. In this small town of Argonia, in accordance with my usual procedure, I began to visit various Titanas, pursuing there, as always, the fulfillment of my principal aim. 
and is creating corresponding conditions for the arising and existence of various one-brained and two-brained beings. After all sorts of difficulties, at last, one clear morning, we reached the summit and suddenly saw on the horizon the outline of a large water space, bordering the shores of that part of the continent of Ashtar then called, Pearl Land. Four days later we arrived at the chief center of existence of the third Asiatic group, the city then known as, Kayamon. Having arranged for a place to stay, Ahun and I spent the first few days simply strolling about the streets of the city, observing the specific manifestations of the beings of that third group in the process of their ordinary existence. It cannot be helped, my dear Hassan. Now that I have told you the history of the arising of the second group of beings on the continent of Ashtar, I shall also have to tell you about the arising of the third group. Tell me, tell me, dear beloved grandfather. Cry passing eagerly. Then, with reverence, he looked at his arms and said with great sincerity. May my dear and kind grandfather become worthy of protecting himself to the degree of reason of the sacred Anglat. Saying nothing to this, the Elzebub only smiled and continued as follows. The history of this third group begins shortly after that period when the families of the Kermaro Hunters had first come from the continent of Atlantis to the shores of the Sea of Beneficent Fan, having settled there, had founded the second group of Asiatic beings. In those remote days, infinitely remote for your contemporary favorites, that is, not long before the second Transipalmian perturbation occurred to this ill-fated planet, certain consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer had begun to be crystallized in the presences of the beings of the continent of Atlantis, and this aroused in them the need, among other needs on becoming to three brain beings, to adorn them with various trinkets and to wear the famous talismans they had invented. And one of these trinkets, much prized then on the continent of Atlantis is everywhere today on the earth, with this, pearls, we have mentioned, pearls, are formed in 31 brain beings breeding in the salutary of your planet Earth, that is, in the part called Pentelisbana, or as your favorites might express it, the blood of the planet, which is found in the common presence of every planet and serves the actualizing of the process of the most great common cosmic protoautobocrat, and there on your planet this part is called water. The one brain beings in which pearls are formed used to breed in the salutary or water spaces surrounding the continent of Atlantis, but on account of the great demand, so many of these pearl-bearing beings were destroyed that soon there were none left along the shores of that continent thereupon. When those beings who made the aim and sense of their existence the destruction of these one brain beings, that is to say, to destroy them only to procure that part of their common presence called pearls, for the gratification of their absurd egoism, found no more in the water spaces near the continent of Atlantis, these professionals began to look for them in other water spaces and gradually moved farther and farther away from their own continent. Once during this search, 
Their wraps were unexpectedly earned by prolonged, salutary Othnian displacement, or, as they say, storms, to a region abounding in these, pearl-bearing beings, where conditions were extremely favorable for their destruction. The waters that these destroyers happened to reach, and where these, pearl-bearing beings spread in large numbers, were precisely those surrounding the country then called, Pearl Land, and now called, Hindustan, or, India. Single Coast. For the first few days, these terrestrial professionals gave free reign to the information, already inherent in their presences, wantonly to destroy these one grain beings of their planet, but later, after they found out, also by chance, that almost everything required for ordinary existence grew in abundance on the neighboring land mass, they decided not to return to Atlantis but to settle permanently in pro land. Thereupon a few of these destroyers of pearl-bearing beings sailed back to the continent of Atlantis, and after bartering their pearls for articles still lacking in the new place, they returned to pearl land, bringing with them their families and those of their comrades who had stayed behind. Later on, others among those first settlers in this country, still, knew, for the beings of that period, visited their native land from time to time to exchange pearls for various articles they needed, and each time they brought back with them more of their relatives and kinsmen, or simply laborers indispensable for their extensive activities. So, my boys, from then on, that part of the surface of the planet Earth became known to all the three grain beings there, and especially to those of Atlantis, as the land of beneficence. Thus, many beings from Atlantis were already existing on this part of the continent of Ashkart before the second great catastrophe occurred to the planet Earth, and when the continent of Atlantis was engulfed within your planet many of its inhabitants who happened to be saved, chiefly those who had relatives by blood or marriage in pro land, gradually collected there, with it, the fundity, proper to them they multiplied steadily, and began to spread over this part of their planet. First they populated only two particular regions around the mouths of two great rivers, which flowed from the interior of the continent of Ashkart and Antivinja. The vast water space just where many of the pearl-bearing beings spread but as their numbers continued to increase, they also began to settle in the interior of the country, although their favorite regions were still the valleys of the two rivers. Well then, my boy, when I first arrived in Pearl Land, I decided to attain my aim as before by means of the Kavapirnoni, existing there, that is, through their religion, but it turned out that at that time the beings of this third group of the continent of Ashkart had several peculiar Kavapirnanas, or religions, each based upon a quite independent, religious teaching, having nothing in common with the others. In view of this I began to make a serious study of these religious teachings, and, having ascertained that the one founded on the teaching of a genuine messenger of our common endless creator, afterward called Saint Buddha, had the most followers, I devoted all my attention to its study. Before telling you more about the three brain beings breeding 
being on that part of the surface of the planet Earth, I think it necessary to remark, however briefly, that ever since the custom arose of having independent, Kavakirnana, or religion, there have existed and still exist among your favorites two basic kinds of religious teachings. Single quote. Psychic functioning proper to a Tasnama has been developed, and the other kind of religious teaching is founded upon detailed instructions revealed as they were by genuine messengers from above, who are indeed sent from time to time by certain of the closest assistants of our common father to help the three. Brain beings of your planet destroy in their presence the crystallized consequences of the properties of the organ tundra buffer. The religion then followed by most of the beings of Ko and, to which I devoted my attention, and about which I now find it necessary to tell you, arose in the following way. As the three brain beings of that third group multiplied, many of them were formed with Tasnamusian properties and began spreading ideas more maleficent than usual among the other beings around them, so that a special psychic property began to be crystallized in the presence of most of them, engendering a factor that greatly hindered the normal exchange of substances actualized by the most great common cosmic protoautodocrat. Well then, as soon as that lamentable result, again issuing from this same planet, became known to certain most sacred individuals, they graciously vouchsafed that a corresponding sacred individual be sent especially to that group of beings to regulate their being existence in a more or less tolerable manner, in accordance with the existence of the whole of that solar system. The sacred individual who was sent to them was coated with the planetary body of a terrestrial free brain being and was called, as I have said, Saint Buddha. This actualization took place several centuries before my first visit to the country of Poland. At this point Tassane looked up at the Elzebub and said, Dear Grandfather, more than once in your talks you have used the expression, Tasnama. Until now I have understood, merely from the intonation of your voice and the consonants of the word itself, that by this expression you designate a certain three brain being who always set apart from others as a favorite word, objective contempt. Me. As always, and explain to me the real meaning of this word. Whereupon the Elzebub, with a smile peculiar to him, replied, as regards this, type, the free brain being for whom I have adopted this expression, I will tell you at the proper time. But meanwhile know that this word designates the already defined common presence of any free brain being, whether consisting of the planetary body alone or already could of with higher being bodies, in whom for some reason or other data have not been crystallized for the divine impulse of objective conscience. With no further explanation of the word, Tasnama, the Elzebub continued. Well, my boys, during my detailed study of that religious teaching, I also discovered that when this sacred individual had become coated with the presence of a free brain being of that planet, and had seriously pondered how to fulfill the task laid upon him from above, he decided to accomplish it by the enlightenment of their reason. Here it 
must be noted without fail that at that time there had already been crystallized in the presence of Saint Buddha, as my detailed investigations made evident, a very clear understanding that during the